Hey everyone, this is Eric Sluve over at ntpro.nl and in this video I will show you a new feature of NSX 6.4 and it's the context aware firewall, so layer 7 firewalling. So what do we have? We have a production cluster with all my ESX hosts. They are prepared, the kernel module is pushed into these hosts and I'm running one VM right here, the Telnet server, and this is a Windows XP machine and this Windows XP machine is hosting a Telnet daemon. Uh, so let's take a closer look at this Windows XP machine. It has an IP address 10.0.0.24 and it's listening on port 23 and I should be able to create a Telnet connection to this virtual machine from my laptop. So I've installed a Telnet client on my laptop and if I look at the configuration of this session then the target address is configured correctly. I'm using the correct port, port 23 and um, yeah I can make a connection so I open this session and I can see that I have to provide the username and password and then eventually I will have access to the command prompt of my Windows XP host. When I jump back to the web client and I, I'm going into the networking and security section right here, then there is a special flow monitoring tool and this flow monitoring tool allows me to check uh, the flows that are running on the network adapter that is configured with the Telnet server. So what we see here is interesting because we have a session established on port 23 from my laptop to the Windows XP machine and Telnet traffic is flowing back and forth between the client and the server and I actually have a session. I can also go to the Telnet server right here and I can use the command s and I can see that there is an active administrator connected to the Telnet server. Okay, cool, so far so good. Uh, if I want to stop this session then I can exit this session and let's go back to the web client and go into the firewall section and I've created one rule, the Telnet rule right here and it's configured with any any and the service Telnet and when I select this service I can identify port 23 and this traffic is allowed and uh, it's applied to the distributed firewall. Okay, let's change this action and let's drop or block the traffic for Telnet. So I'm publishing this rule, it's effective immediately uh, if I go back to my Telnet client and I'm trying to open a connection to the Telnet server, I don't get a connection because the traffic on port 23 is blocked. So let's go to the flow monitoring tool and we can see that this port was blocked, port 23 is blocked and I'm not able to Telnet into my Windows XP machine anymore. Okay, can I fly under the radar? Yes, I can, because when I go to this Telnet server, I'm able to change the port from 23 to 24. So now the Telnet server is listening on port 24. Let's adjust the configuration and let's change this in port 24 too. And let's try to create a connection. And as you can see, I'm able to provide a username and a password and I'm able to log on to the Windows XP machine. Even though Telnet traffic is blocked, it's only looking at layer 4 and if I change the port then I can bypass the firewall and still use Telnet on that different port number. I can also see it in the flow monitoring tool. When I go to flow monitoring I can see that port 23 is still closed but port 24 is established and I still have Telnet traffic to my Telnet server. So I want to avoid that people are using Telnet Anyway, so there is a new feature that allows you to look at layer 7 instead of layer 4. So when I jump back to the firewall rules and I click on edit right here, then I have to deselect Telnet and if you search through this list uh, for Telnet, you will notice that there is an additional Telnet entry available here and this is the layer 7 Telnet, so the application data from Telnet which is identified uh, at, at layer 7. So uh, yeah, when I select this application Telnet rule and I publish the changes and you can see that the Telnet server is still up and running. It's running on port 24. Yeah, so if I use the admin tool to see if the 
demon is still running. It's running on port 24. I'm going to look at my client and I can see that the connection is lost because after publishing this rule, uh, the traffic was blocked on port 24 because it's telnet traffic. If I go back to the flow monitoring tool right here, you can see that port 24 is blocked because port 24 is using telnet traffic or the telnet traffic is blocked uh, be even though it's running on another port number. So let, let, let's give it another try. The server has closed the session. I'm trying to open a new session on port 24 and we see that the traffic is blocked because it's telnet traffic and it's identified based on the layer 7 traffic inspection. So that's a real cool feature for NSX and what you will see in this new 6.4 version is that there are a lot of predefined application data uh, types that can be automatically recognized. So we can see application data for Bitdefender, for Active Directory, for DNS, for HTTP with all the different security levels and those all those traffic types are all listening on ports uh, or, or on layer 7 instead of on layer 4. Yeah. Okay, so Eric Sloof is signing off. Please keep visiting ntpro.nl.